Welcome. JCPS is committed to providing a workplace free of harassment and discrimination of any kind, including sexual harassment and other forms of harassment based on characteristics protected by state or federal employment discrimination laws and board policy. Education and prevention are the best tools to eliminate harassment and discrimination in the workplace. All people deserve a workplace that is free from harassment and discrimination. Every JCPS employee has the responsibility to understand what harassment and discrimination is, what it looks like, and eliminate it from our schools and offices. It is the responsibility of every employee to treat coworkers with respect and to speak up if they witness inappropriate conduct. We must all work together to ensure that our workplace behavior is respectful of all employees and students. JCPS is an equal opportunity employer and takes the equal treatment of employees very seriously. Board policy states, the Jefferson County Public School District shall not discriminate in recruitment or employment on the basis of race, color, national origin, age, religion, marital, or parental status, political affiliations or beliefs, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, veteran status, religion, genetic information, disability, or limitations related to pregnancy, childbirth, or related medical conditions. The district shall promote equal opportunities through a vigorous affirmation action program as an integral part of personnel policy and practice in the employment, development, advancement, and treatment of employees of Jefferson County Public Schools. The policies of the district protect all employees, students from harassment and discrimination. They cover all state and federal protected classes of people, plus some additional groups that also need protection. The policies establish procedures for reporting harassment or discrimination, provide examples of prohibited conduct, and make clear that harassers are subject to disciplinary action. Harassment discrimination is unlawful behavior against an employee or student based on race, color, national origin, age, religion, marital or parental status, political affiliations or beliefs, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, veteran status, genetic information, disability or limitations related to pregnancy, childbirth or related medical conditions. Harassment discrimination involves Intimidation by threats of or physical violence. The creation or of a climate of hostility or intimidation. Or the use of language, conduct, or symbols to convey hatred, contempt, or prejudice. Harassment discrimination is prohibited at all times on school property and off school grounds during school sponsored activities. The U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, or EEOC, is responsible for enforcing federal laws that make it illegal to discriminate a job applicant or employee based on several federally protected classes. Those include protections against discrimination based on age, disability, race, color, sex, religion, and national origin. In addition, federal law allow for a jury trial and damages for a violation of federal employment discrimination protections, require equal pay for equal work, and requires entities, including school districts, that receive federal funds to follow non-discriminatory practices. 
Federal statutes also protect people from discrimination on the basis of genetic information. Federal Title IX law and protects our students from discrimination on the basis of sex, U.S. Department of Education guidance based on the recent U.S. Supreme Court decision clarified for school districts that discrimination of a student based on sexual orientation or gender identity is also prohibited under Title IX. Kentucky law recently added protections from discrimination based on pregnancy, childbirth, and related conditions. State law also permits breastfeeding in any location, public or private, where the breastfeeding parent is otherwise authorized to be. That applies to visitors to schools as well as employees and students. Sexual harassment in the workplace remains a significant problem that has traumatic impacts on the people affected and can create a workplace culture climate that is detrimental to all. The best way to address sexual harassment is to prevent it from ever happening. Prevention requires that we need to know what sexual harassment is, have a good understanding of examples of harassing behavior. With that knowledge, each employee must commit to ourselves and to one another to avoid actions that constitute sexual harassment. In addition, when sexual harassment occurs, each of us needs to know how to respond. Sexual harassment is a form of sex discrimination that violates Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. There are two primary types of sexual harassment, quid pro quo and hostile work environment. Quid pro quo means this for that or something for something. It occurs when a job benefit is directly tied to an employee submitting or unwelcome sexual advances. For example, a supervisor promises an employee a raise if he or she will go out on a date with him or tells an employee he or she will be fired if he or she doesn't sleep with him or her. Hostile work environment sexual harassment occurs when an employee is subjected to comments of a sexual nature, offensive sexual materials, or unwelcome physical contact as a regular part of the work environment. Supervisors, managers, coworkers can be responsible for creating a hostile environment. Hostile work environment harassment becomes unlawful when and during the harassment becomes a condition of employment or the conduct is severe or pervasive enough to create a work environment that is a reasonable person would consider intimidating, hostile, or abusive. A reasonable person is the legal term often used in cases of sexual harassment. In layman's term, the reasonable person standard refers to a hypothetically reasonable person with a reasonable way of interpreting and reacting to a situation of sexual harassment. A hostile work environment claim must be based on treatment due to being part of a protected class. Sexual harassment is unwelcome conduct of a sexual nature and can include sexual advances, a request for sexual favors, verbal comments, unwanted touching, other physical conduct of a sexual nature, and the display of sexually explicit or suggestive materials. Sexual harassment victims can be anyone affected by the off offensive behavior, including someone other than the person harassed. A harassment victim can be the opposite sex of the harasser or the same sex. Sexual harassment victims can be either male or female. In fact, since 2010, 16.5% of sexual harassment charges filed with the EEOC were filed by men. In 2019, 
there were over 7,500 complaints of sexual harassment reported to the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission with settlement dollars of over 68 million. This represents only a small fraction of all sexual harassment, most of which is not reported. According to research, however, workplace sexual harassment is common, but it is rarely reported. 38% of all women and 14% of men have reported experiencing sexual harassment at work. One in seven women and one in 17 men have sought a new job assignment, changed jobs, or quit a job of sexual harassment and assault. 60% of women say they have experienced unwanted sexual attention, sexual coercion, sexually crude conduct, or sexist comments in the workplace. Over 85% of people who experience sexual harassment never file a formal legal charge, and approximately 70% of employees never even complain internally. Retaliation is also against the law. It occurs when an employer or supervisor takes action against a covert individual because individual complains about harassment or discrimination. This takes place in discrimination proceeding or otherwise opposes discrimination. Sexual harassment can occur in different forms. It could be something you say, things you do, or physical actions such as touching and blocking. Examples of things that may be sexual harassment include unwelcomed staring, winks and kisses, personal gifts, displaying sexually oriented pictures, using sexually oriented screensavers, letters, phone calls, text, material of sexual nature, and undressing someone with their eyes. Unwelcome physical actions that may be sexual harassment include touching, pinching, patting, bumping, or grabbing, cornering or blocking a hallway, and unsolicited back or neck rubs. Sexual harassment can be committed by anyone, including supervisors, subordinates, coworkers, clients and customers, teachers or students. Harassment can be committed by someone of the opposite sex or the same sex. There are some types of activities where people should be intentional in order to avoid potentially sexually harassing situations. These include nicknames, stereotypes, email and internet, dating or initiating a personal relationship, cartoons, posters, pictures, and inappropriate apparel, jokes, including jokes about sex, race, religion, national origin, sexual orientation, and similar issues and comments on personal appearance. Board policy prohibits dating relationships between a supervisor and a person being supervised. A dating relationship is a relationship of a romantic or intimate nature. It does not include a casual acquaintanceship or ordinary fraternization in a business or social context. Employees must notify the Human Resource Department as soon as a dating relationship exists or may exist between a supervisor and a direct report. HR will work to find an alternate assignment. Any failure to give such notice to HR will result in disciplinary action. Test your sexual harassment knowledge. Number one, when a woman wears a short skirt or a person observes his religion's grooming practices, they are making the kind of statement that is asked for harassment. A, true. B, false. The answer is false. Regardless of what someone wears, no one is asking to be treated unfairly or to be discriminated against. Number two, dating between a supervisor and a subordinate is not always sexual harassment, but is nonetheless prohibited. A, true. B, false. The answer is false. 
a relationship between a boss and a subordinate is not considered to be harassment. However, it is against board policy and the two individuals should report to AR that they are in a dating relationship so that one can be moved. Number three. It is considered flattery, not harassment, when one person repeatedly asks for a date despite repeated declines. A, true. B, false. The answer is false. It is considered harassment to continue to ask someone out once they have made it clear that they are not interested. Number four, it is always considered harassment to compliment a person's appearance or clothing. A, true. B, false. The answer is false. It is not considered sexual harassment to compliment one on their appearance. However, you should always be careful with what you say and how you say it. It is possible the individual on the receiving end may be uncomfortable with what you say or how you say it. Number five, unwanted physical contact, including hugs and pats, are considered harassment. A, true. B, false. This one is true. The key word is unwanted physical contact. Number six, threatening job repercussions if a person turns down a date or sexual relationship is considered harassment. A, true. B, false. This one is true. Number seven, harassment is generally defined by how the person on the receiving end receives it. A, true. B, false. This is true. It doesn't matter what you meant by a certain compliment or physical contact. If the person on the receiving end feels uncomfortable due to that contact or compliment, the conduct may be harassment. Number eight, if an African-American individual intimidates and threatens a Hispanic individual, it is not harassment because they are both minorities. A, true. B, false. The answer is false regardless of whether it occurs between two individuals who are considered minorities, conduct can still be considered harassment. Number nine, sexual jokes, comments, and gestures are not considered harassment when directed at someone of the same sex. A, true. B, false. The answer is false. Number 10, some types of harassment are not covered by federal law, but are prohibited by board policy. A, true. B, false. The answer is false. Sexual harassment is always against the law. If you feel safe and comfortable doing so, you may speak to the person harassing you and ask them to stop, but you are not required to do so and may simply report the conduct Write everything down, report the incident to your supervisor or the Office of Compliance and Investigations at 485-3341. There are two main types of investigations, harassment discrimination. Investigations are for cases when an employee files a grievance against another employee for harassment or discrimination. Misconduct investigations are initiated at the request of a principal or cost center head or based on a report from Child Protective Services. The Office Compliance and Investigations investigate both. Compliance and Investigation receives requests for investigations from several sources, including school principals and cost center heads. That is why it is extremely important that once an investigation request has been received, that you know what to expect and what your role as the administrator is. 
What do you do when one of your employees feels they are being harassed or discriminated against? There are several ways you can address complaints of harassment and discrimination. Speak to the employee and ask if it is something they feel comfortable having you handle at the school or department level. Provide the employee with the Discrimination Grievance Procedure Handbook, then refer them to the Office of Compliance and Investigations, or simply just refer them to the Office of Compliance and Investigations. What do you do when one of your employees feels they are being harassed or discriminated against? You should refer them to the Office of Compliance and Investigations, but the responsibility to contact the office to file a complaint is on the employee. Once you make the referral, it is best you remove yourself from the situation and allow the process to move forward. It is not your responsibility to make sure the employee has followed up with making the complaint. If a case falls under the scope of an employee-initiated harassment or discrimination grievance, provide the individual with our District Discrimination Grievance Handbook, then step away from the situation and wait to be contacted by the Director of Compliance and Investigations. The Director of Compliance and Investigations will contact you and ask you to notify employee that a grievance was filed against them and they must withhold contact with the opposing individual in order to reduce the risk of retaliation or interfering in an investigation. Misconduct investigations are investigations that you, as the administrator, have requested directly to the Office of Compliance and investigations or that has been received from Child Protective Services. Once you or CPS has requested an investigation, you should step away from the in incident. Be sure to follow the advice or directives from JCPS Employee Relations and the Office of Compliance in Investigations. Do not collect any additional statements and or documents unless you have oppressed the investigator or appropriate individual. If incident involves students, it is your responsibility to contact parents, guardians, to inform them of the allegations and ask them if they want to be present during the interview of their child. During the investigation, it is important to know individuals involved could be resigned to an alternative location during the duration of the investigation. Reassignment of those employees is done through employee relations and is not under the scope of compliance and investigations. JCPS employees are expected to behave on an ethical manner in all aspects of work. To assist employees in understanding what that means in a practical sense, JCPS has a set of ethic guidelines which all employees are expected to follow. Purpose of ethic guidelines are to make sure that every employee or affiliate acts in the highest ethical manner to preserve the public trust, and to make sure every employee or affiliate knows there are clear, comprehensive ethical requirements established. Some key ideas incorporated in the ethics guidelines include a commitment to excellence, integrity, in our work for the district, and personal responsibility. Good workplace ethics means that you demonstrate proper workplace conduct, avoid conflicts of interest, and maintain appropriate relationships with coworkers and our students. Ethical behavior at work includes not abusing leadership roles and not abusing public positions and resources using district timed wisely, and maintaining confidentiality when appropriate. While the ethics guidelines provide general guidance, it does not provide a definitive answer to every possible situation. When making decisions, we should use all good judgment to fulfill the spirit as well as the letter of the ethics guidelines. 
every JCPS employee is required by law to report suspected cases of child abuse and neglect. Every year in July, every employee receives a memorandum that outlines their reporting requirements and how to make a report. If you become aware of an instance of possible child abuse or neglect, you are required to report it through the Kentucky Child Protective Services Hotline or the Louisville Metro Police Department Crimes Against Children Unit. A report must be made regardless of who is suspected of child abuse or neglect, which can be caused by anyone. A detailed definition of child abuse and neglect is provided in the memorandum. After making a report, you must also immediately report it to your principal or cost center head. School or district personnel are not permitted to conduct an internal investigation instead of making a report leading to an official investigation by proper authorities. Do not delay making a report. In some cases, a CPS worker or Crimes Against Children Unit officer may come to a school and wish to interview a child alone school personnel are expected to comply with that request. If you make a report of child abuse or neglect in good faith, you cannot be prosecuted in civil or criminal court. Failure to report suspected child abuse of neglect is against the law, and you may be charged and also be subjected to disciplinary action by the district. For more information, contact Compliance and Investigations, or visit our website with Jefferson County Public Schools.